The system centered around a hierarchical chain of command, with all radar information being transmitted to a central filter room, located at Fighter Command's headquarters at Bentley Priory. Here, teams of highly skilled workers worked around the clock to take all of the raw information streaming in from around the country and transform it into a real-time situation map of Britain's airspace. The center of the filter room was dominated by a massive map of Britain, surrounded by members of the RAF and WAAF plotting raid tracks as they received information from the radar stations. Filtering was a complex analytical task. Filterers had to determine the most probable position, direction of travel, speed, height, and strength of the contact, and the resulting summary of this information was called a track. Once information had been ratified, it was placed on the map using raid blocks. These blocks provided the concise and crucial information needed for decision making and record keeping. Crucially, these blocks were readable from the balcony above where senior RAF and WAAF staff resided, observing the battles unfold. The blocks contained rows of data, each carrying vital information for these senior staff to make decisions. The top row was a raid serial number, identifying individual raiding parties. The middle row provided a rough estimate of the aircraft involved, while the bottom row provided the aircraft's current known altitude. These blocks were continually moved and updated by members of the WAAF. The direction of the raids were also plotted using colored arrow tiles, which were color coded to inform observers of the age of the information corresponding to colors on an iconic piece of World War II history hanging on the walls of these operation rooms, the sectional clock. Its most distinctive feature being the colored triangular markers running in a circle in five minute intervals, colored alternately, red, yellow, and blue. If data arrived while the minute hand was in a blue section, the plotter would place blue markers and so on. However, only two colors were placed on the map at a time, as data older than 10 minutes was deemed irrelevant. To avoid any more Barking Creek incidents, blocks denoting friendly aircraft were also placed on the map. Here, additional placards on sticks were placed on top of the blocks to display the squadron numbers involved, while the number of aircraft and their altitude was displayed on the rails below once again. Once this information was processed and ratified, it was passed down through the Doubting System's hierarchical system. This operations room in Bentley Priory was the head of the chain. This was the RAF Fighter Command HQ, 